much, Slacks. Yes, we're ready to go here with game two. Secret versus Tundra. Let's see if Secret are able to fare a little bit better because that game one, it was a rough one. Tundra coming out all guns blazing and being able to take that first map against Secret. I mean, overall, we did here, of course, towards the end of the game. You know, Secret, they were able to keep spirits high. We had a lot of positivity from the comms. Sure. Exactly what you need right after, uh, towards the end of a very rough start to the Grand Finals. Yeah, and I like the, you know, the big pivot that they made this game. Rather than looking to chase heroes around, looking to try to catch Tundra, which has seemed to be one of the biggest problems for the most teams this tournament, begins. they're the ones who is going to be forcing the issue and forcing Tundra to kind of react to them. So let's see if that works. We see right away, Tundra, they go for this level one smoke play, incredibly strong level one with the Marcy with the CK stun to chase heroes. But we see the secret prepared. They had this early ward placed on top of their outpost to see immediately when smoke broke. So prepared for that early game. And we'll see how well, you know, Secret can deal with some of the more different heroes that Tundra are bringing into the fray this time. You know, eyes are going to be on nine, see how much he can do. Oh, that is annoying. He's going to be able awesome. to get a, a bit of damage down to Crystalis as he tries to get towards his lane. He knows he has no risk. He's playing versus Chen in the lane, so you can easily go for these type of pressure plays. Give 33 that first few creeps advantage. I mean, uh, so this mid matchup as well, you know, we're seeing two sort of greedy heroes here that mm -hmm. potential to, to really become the carries for both teams. The Morphling versus the Arc Warden. Uh, anything exciting to come out of the laning stage? Is just going to be a trade and farm? Or, or do one of these heroes have to be more careful than the other in this matchup? Probably a trade and farm. Maybe nine slightly ahead, if anything. But no, I'd say mostly just a trade. We've seen Nisha and just Morphlings in general. With the new skill build that you can go, you know, you only have to put two points in attribute shift. You're able to prioritize having more points in adaptive and waveform. You're able to secure CS constantly. So I'd imagine Nisha does do just fine. Looking at top. This is a, I mean, this is probably the more exciting lane, I would imagine, to look at the shards, the stun, the flesh, constant kill threats onto the Phoenix, maybe even onto CK. Bottom lane. Those sprays are stacking up, but oh, damage from Saction 33, it's enough to burst through Crystalis and take him out. She's gonna even give a bit of a chase down onto Puppy. Uh -oh. He might go down too. Him off as well. Saxon will be ready to dive in under the tower. Right. It's a lane starting off with a double kill for 33. That is, that's not something you want to see if you're secret. This is just the Tundra, the Tundra offlane special, uh, yeah, right? I mean, this is always one. what they do. Somehow they're able to just always know how to apply so much pressure. And with this death, Soxa comes back, six tangos, a salve, 33. You see the items. They do this almost every time on the Visage. Tries to start with no regen, just tries to get mangoes yeah. and stats. So they can just keep doing this. I mean, Crystal is so much damage. He comes back into the lane and he's pretty much immediately down to a third of his HP. Top lane as well, we're seeing resolution. He's getting zoned back, snaking able to take down Zyze's courier. Get the shards down, but dives at the ready. The first few levels are incredibly oppressive from this Marcian Visage. This is one of their bread and butters. Puppy, start to attempt some stabilization with the lane, get the pullback. See what creeps he's able to get to kind of dissuade this damage that's going to be coming out. He gets a pretty good one. It's a good one to at least harass them back, to kind of stop their aggression. See how soon they're able to get to a point where Chrysalis is. I feel a bit more confident to step up the creep waves. It's not easy off to the side, Saxa. They'll get the creep. Go to look to take down the creep. They know how strong that creep can be. Good choice to kind of go for it there. And this is a great lane for the Visage where it's like, yeah, the Bristle, we, you know, as the panel, as uh, Sabinoto were talking about, you know, you do counter this hero in a way as the game progresses and even in lane sometimes, but also you have infinite mana, right? Visage is just always able to just bash out those spells constantly onto a Crystalis's Bristle. Seen, uh, of course, Puppy quite able to take the, the small camp back before the respawn. Saxa, making sure that it's ever, ever more tougher and tougher for Secret to gain momentum and control of the creep waves down in this bottom lane. 33 is able to hold it in a fantastic position. Good position and tons of regen, so they can go, always go for this harassment. Crystalis, I believe he's got his ring. Yeah, he's got it on the courier, so we'll have some sustain. But his stats overall will be a bit low because it's going to take a very long time for that to come out. So could still look to apply pressure onto him there. Has got both his spells on cooldown at the moment, so secret. I'll look to choose this time to strike. Skidder drags back sides, though. And then sure that that last right click required to take snaking down won't be allowed to be there. Still holding the fairy fire as well, too. He's just kind of baiting them a little bit if they did try to commit. So far, looking at the mid lane. Yeah, Nisha, he's doing just fine. He's actually gone 3 1 1 skill build. Okay. Not really feeling Daya's like he needs to go for any attribute shift attack. at all versus an Arc Warden. Only that one point. And on this bottom lane. Puppy in particular has to be very careful. I mean, Chrysalis as well, honestly. Oh, the sidekick. 
Jung with the rebound. Full spreads are stacking up. Good job. Good job. They've, at this stage, with the lead that they've already managed to get against the Bristle, it very much seems that Marcy and Visage, they can kill that Bristle before the Quill Sprays become too much, and he starts killing them. They and know exactly when to push it, and they know that they can get away with it. It's exact. It's just like last time, right? When they have this Tide plus this Hoodwink versus that Pudge. This time it's Visage with Marcy. Heavy physical damage. Blades of Attack again on 33. Same build he's going to go as last time. Not the phase boots, but of course just Wraith Pact, high damage. I mean, how do you sort of re recover from the state of this bottom lane? And it feels like one more death from Crystalis down here, and it's going to be very, I, very difficult to bring this lane back in secret space. I like that he bought the raindrop. I think that's a good, at least, attempt to be able to. I think you can get a trade kill probably with those quills that we saw Soxa drop low. Just any type of small stats, any type of small survivability will help. His ring. He's still sitting behind the tower. He actually hasn't dropped, brought it out himself. He won't in a second. I think the, the scary thing as well, of course, is from Sax. So, you know, having a good start down bottom with the levels that he's going to be getting in on him. You know, the other lanes, they've got to be prepared as well, right? The perfect hero, Marcy, to have high impact at any part of the map that, that happens around these tier one towers early. They've got to be prepared for Sax to turn up and turn things around, just like he was doing in game one as in Hoodwood. Bottom lane. Another jump over towards Puppy. It's Puppy and Chrysalis try and stand their ground, but Puppy goes down. Chrysalis might have a chance to chase Saxer out this time as Saxer has he got any further options of getting away. He doesn't, so Chrysalis finally finding a bit of action going in his direction. Honestly, maybe that's the way you have to do it. Just Puppy has to sacrifice himself. He has to be the one to just soak those soul assumptions for Bristleback to just get this type of trade. Because otherwise, yeah, definitely seeing a bit of promise. But Chrysalis, once he has Vanguard, he'll be able to at least stay down here a lot easier, and he's getting pretty close to it. As we can see, you know, despite sort of the deaths that have occurred down on that bottom lane, Chrysalis, he's pretty much keeping he is. straight even with the farm that Skeeter, you know, carrying for Tundra on the other side. The map is getting as well. Yeah, and yeah, pretty much Vanguard is going to be done, so it should be a lot safer. And Puppy, he's going to start getting some levels, so he's going to be able to actually protect Chrysalis. We see him grab some magic resistance and also just a little bit of extra damage. So that actually would help a lot. That little bit of Cloak Aura that's going to come out could protect Chrysalis enough. Let's see. What's Let's see. See if Saxon 33 can get away with this, yeah. but now with the levels, indeed, at this stage, it, it very much feels like it, it's not going to be nearly as easy as it was for Tundra in the early minutes of this lane to take down the Bristol. Chrysalis, whilst there's been a few deaths here and there, he, he's got through the rough bit. The but, but Vistage level 6 already. That is pretty massive for 33, having it this early on. The Vlad is going to be here too. Caught him in the shards, Nisha. He'll look to step over and finish off the kill. He'll get it. Zayats should go down into the spark break. So both mids able to take a kill out of this one. Chris here. And he's turned up with the familiars, ready to chase out Nisha. Nisha's got a fair few one charges. It's only a level one shift. Put back on car. The burst is there from nine. It ends up being a double kill for the mid-arc warden. And they do punish him for having level one attribute shift, right? Maxing a waveform, having two points in the adaptive. You do see that they're actually able to get that damage come out. And all that is because 33 hits the six so fast yeah, down bottom. He's able to come in. And of course, the, the timings that are enabled off Dyer's the back of that is pretty top. huge Drum already. The, the completed Midas out onto nine. Wow. He's able to get this you know, started very, very early on. Beautiful. As he's, he's going to be making the money. There's every reason to believe that unless Secret can make any moves to find this Arc Warden, Nine, he's going to start shooting far, far ahead of anyone else in this game with feels, regards to the farm he'll get. It feels like it could get to these points where maybe the CK pick is kind of this distraction, you know, and this Arc Warden, he's going to try to transition hard into that real carry for his team. Other good thing about the double Midas, as we saw there, you automatically get two neutral items. It's actually very nice when you're able to get it this early on on Nine. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And now they're actually, so look at this, a bit okay. of a dynamic change. Yep. They're going to put the Visage mid, have him match up versus that Morphling, and they're going to send the Arc Warden for the time being down bottom. So top lane. Trying to go for snaking. They do connect with the stun. Nice play. Secret. They get in and take him down, and we'll in fact see Tundra sort of bail out from this top lane. Give a chance for Secret. They'll put some pressure on. And likely with the TPs out, probably not going to be an area of the map that Tundra will look to hold on to. I mean, we did see this, of course, last time round as well, right? Game one, nine minutes in, secret, they get this good timing on the tier one. Snaking will turn back up. See if he's able to do anything on his own. He has to be very cautious. Secret still with three members around. Look at the pressure on this top lane. He's so, just soaking, it looks like. Just trying to soak up any of that bit of experience. But the, the fact that this has happened twice now, it very much seems that you know, Tundra as a team, they sort of make the call to, did you not put any resources into holding that tower? Just let it go. They tend to be, you know, that extremely efficient team as we hear 
Lots of players talk about it. Very frustrating to play versus Tundra because they know how to dodge these dodge these plays, dodge the aggression, trying to make as little mistakes as possible. Another neutral item, of course. And yeah, giving Socks and now some levels too. So distributing that wealth, top two net worth, and the CK Skinner. He's hero. He jungles just fine. He's gonna be able to keep his base up and probably look to do what he was doing anyway last time is still look to connect top, use Phantasm just to farm, kind of acting as this pseudo Naga Siren. Of course, last game, very much saw the secret. They never really found that chance to sort of get Christmas involved. Top lane, Snake King, out with the dive, doesn't Might matter. He's sure. got those final few right clicks chasing him down. You get the kill, so things looking Looking good here for Nisha. You know, despite the quick Midas timing on nine, Nisha very much very close nice. behind him in farm. And he's got this matchup always. It's, she sucks, so they actually get on him. Got anything to rebound out towards? He doesn't. They Secret, they hold him in the river. They're gonna bring it up even now, six to six. Secret definitely doing a bit of a better job this time round at, at responding to some of these movements that Tundra's making around the map. And playing around Nisha, right? They, they, with the skill build that he has, he has so much burst potential. He actually has the gap closing potential as well, too, versus most of these heroes that can sometimes be a bit annoying to get on top of, so. So far looking to continue to play aggressive around this Morphling. And definitely seems sort of a, a bit of a heavier focus around playing around this jungle of Tundra. Just trying to make sure that Skeeter doesn't get nearly as much space as he did last game. Obviously, the, the difference in dynamic this time is the concern that too much is focused on trying to shut down Skeeter's area. Nine goes uncontested, and it's been quite a few minutes now that Nine's been able to sit down here on this bottom lane. He's getting complete free fall. He's starting, space. To, he's starting to be pretty annoying, too. Crystals is caught in an awkward position. He eats two or three of those spark rates. He's just trying to cut from Secret. I'm going to try and make moves here. And so far, Resolution Sites have done a pretty good job of killing off Snaking when they catch him. Skeeter. It's going to be a bit of a bigger kill. They're going to go straight in for him. It's close to the tower, though. Let's see. And it looks like Tundra may have made the call to not sort of throw in any further Dyer's TPs. I mean, it doesn't even, it's Dyer's not even needed there. Tundra, mid. they make the Dyer's sort of calm response to not react with TPs, knowing that Skeeter's just able to walk that one off. But with that slight moment of, like, space at all, you see Puppy rotate toward mid. This is how they want to be playing. They want to be the ones who are dictating that pace, dictating this tower aggression. So we'll be able to claim this one early. Nisha, he's almost got his Dragon Lance also finished up, so. Under Very farmed so far on Secret. And they're also, in the meantime, I saw they are starting to stack Ancients a little bit too, so making sure they do have that condition for the Bristleback to continue getting that increased farm. Good. So Secret though, infinitely better than that last game. It's certainly feeling a bit more solid, but I, I imagine to a sort of a point with regards to the drafts, this is sort of expected, right? This time around, Secret, they, they gave themselves a bit of a better shot of having this sort of earlier hold, earlier pressure that they're able to apply. And at the same time, you know, the change with Nine playing an Arc Warden instead of a He's playing like task, a carry. Exactly. He's going to react to sort of these moves a little less. So I don't think, you know, Tundra, they're not going to feel too under pressure despite losing some of these early towers. They've gone for a bit of a different approach this time Absolutely. around. And, you know, at the moment, under a 1k gold difference between the two teams. Nine, I think he's still very happy. Yeah, it's, just, it's a totally different approach, right? The last time they had the Tusk who's super aggressive, constantly rotating, making plays. Now it's just, it, it's a full economy game, really. Everyone's just trying to find Radiant's as much farm as possible tower. until they it's find this attack. timing. Wraith Pact is done. Looks like now they're trying to speed up a little bit, go for a tower pressure of their own. They'll take this one for sure. And we uh, have no interest in this. In this fight, this defense around this bottom tower. Radiant's Secret's maximizing. You see now, as fallen. we were mentioning, the stacks. Triple Ancient stack, double hard camp. So Crystalis. We'll have a bit of enabling coming out of your juicy stacks. Good farm for Christmas. We saw very much in game one as the Pudge pretty oh, much held behind the entire time in terms of farm on cause. You can clear these stacks, get on the road towards the Aghanims. That's going to be the point where you can imagine the secret. They're going to really start stepping things up and get up towards the tier two pushes with a Vanguard, Aghanims, Bristle. They're going to want to do as much as they can aggressively with it before Nine suddenly turns up and he has three items done. Very farm heavy game though. Showing all three lanes. See the Morphling shows bottom for a second. They show mid, I believe, on Zayats. Even the Lesh top two, but good ward coverage. So secret they know they're safe for the moments. I'm kind of grouping together with Puppy, with the mech, with the hand of God. They're tanky. There's a lot of damage on Tundra, but this Bristleback with all these heals might just be able to pierce through them. Let's see if they can get on top of any of Tundra. Ooh, either. Tundra's staying pretty hidden outside of the vision of Secret. I mean, Secret, they know that Tundra 
do have a few up here in the jungle. If they get any big kills, Sika could even look for Roche potentially. They're gonna settle for Saxa. So it catches wind of the Marcy off to the side. I'll go for Saxa. For Tundra. Definitely not the biggest of losses there. They had a few cores farming in that area in the secret. They weren't they're, able to find they're, them. They they're going to the do support. it. They're, they're going to go for this. Roche. They have I mean, it's more than enough damage. They have the goo. Do they do anything about this tundra? Uh, are they going to expect the so. secret back up as quickly as they did into the pit? It's not an easy place it's to fight It's going now so quick. Yeah, it's going to be dead already. Secret dictating the pace. Very, very, very good moves here from secret so far. Absolutely getting to play their game so much more than they're able to do so last last game it 15 minutes in they've got the Aegis in their hands so. Ooh. Oh, so close well, it was close indeed snaking a D throwing out a tip for that one that was as close as it gets really on the, the back of an escape in the TP it's a Tundra perhaps wanting to make a move of their own now they do because everyone's shown right secret they haven't shown a lot in these lanes so Tundra looks like they do want to try to counteract this they have nine who can constantly always show up to the fights too yeah I think for, for the most part Tundra know that even though the secret had that Aegis it's sort of an Aegis that's going to be used to, to just continue to allow Nisha to farm safely yeah. and secret will be a little bit split up which gives the chance for Tundra to push for towers themselves and to, to sort of head straight into these fights knowing that they'll probably have the numbers advantage at this stage and they can take these towers pretty quickly as well, too. The Visage with the CK Phantasm tends to be always a tons of strategy, right? There's just, there's so much on the floor. Great pack, illusions, familiars, etc. So they can go for this push, but on the other side, Secret. Taking tier two tower here. Nice Edict. and early, 16 minutes in. Tier two to fall on the top lane. And now that we'll really be able to start taking over this jungle, this half of the map from Tundra. Really sort of shutting down the areas that at Tundra, they kind of need to find right. At least at their two main cores, they need space. Skeeter and Nine, they want to be soaking up quite a lot of the map to get farm on these two carries. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be quite a long time before Tundra just looks for this head-on type of fight. Unless they see, like we said, unless they see Secret completely split up or something like that. It feels like it's going to be going to be quite a farm game coming out from them. Even Soxa now showing mid. He might get punished for this. They got him before. Looks like they're going to go for him again. See if they can find him. Zayats. I don't think they got vision of him for a second. Now they did. Shasha has Skeeter by his side, but too much. Won't be able to jump over towards him in time. And his Saxa going down. Similar wards coming out from Tundra as they did in the last game. So this one, exact same ward, and actually this one not on the high ground this time, but similar kind of some kind of purpose to watch any of these movements that are coming up from Secret, because Tundra, as we said, I think this is really going to be pretty emphasis of farm until Nine says, hey guys, I'm ready to show up. And maybe that's going to actually happen sooner than we expect, because I believe the Gleipnir is about close. to be done. Just so. a recipe away. That could be the indicator for them to show up. It does add so much potential for this hero, the damage, the control, everything, of course. But allows you to just freely land spark rates and kind of just keep people away from getting on top of you. So let's see if that is when they are going to look to fight. It could be difficult to close that gap onto Nine, especially considering the heroes that are drafted around him. A lot of frontline, even sort of from the support, right? Yes. Snaking, getting him with a supernova. Saxa throwing himself in as the Marcy, getting him with the rebound. Very much multiple ways that Tundra can set up a team fight to just allow Nine to go to work. With Secret having a really tough time getting on top of it. Constantly thinking about it. It's hard to push for this sound. Even with the moments left on the Aegis. Secret. Being very careful about how they look to make the next step. It's a risky move. Don't want to overextend and get five man. They haven't seen this. They haven't seen the Arc Ward in a while, so they probably don't know either what Nine's got just yet. Level 13 on this Arc already. Running around as a unit. Four heroes together on Secret. Well, Chrysalis. Looks like he's got the BKB ready, so... Look, it feels like, yeah, Secret, they're just gonna keep trying to push the tempo a little bit faster here. I a blink now on the ledge, too, for Rezo. So, as you mentioned, can be a little bit hard to maybe get to this Arc Warden without just the Morphling getting on him. Now Rezo's got a tool of his own. Okay. And you very much feel that Secret are on a timer, like, even though they have this niche of Morphling that's going to be able to, to get to these incredible stages of power in terms of scaling, you still kind of fear the Arc Warden as the moments pass? Fear the high ground, for sure. Rezo. Tundra. Got to quickly back out, snaking. Oh. Away in time, that snowball not able to catch him. Tundra avoiding the moves of Secret. 
Seeker just trying to get some sort of aggressive play out of these final few seconds that they have on the Aegis of Nisha. It's back over towards the mid, Saxa. A little bit of a chase down onto Puppy. Puppy has got back up on the way. Chrysalis heading over to help out and Tundra. They won't try and poke up into the triangle of Secret quite yet. And they will with Skeeter at the front. He's actually going to go for Puppy. See Chrysalis now as Chrysalis starts to try and push back Tundra and Nisha. Not coming. It's coming in from the side there, but there's no one on North Skeeter, but Saxon's in with the rebound, start up to Nisha, Nisha, starting to try and shift, but that's he's gone, he's got Aegis though. He's going to be back for round two, Chrysalis charging with the BKB, over towards the Phoenix of the Snake, he's able to get the Supernova off. Secret, they've got it back away from the ultimate for now, as Nine turns up with the Tempest double. No longer an easy fight for Secret to charge into, Zyx, he's trying to find some sort of angle from the side, but Tundra, they're here as a full fight, man. They're looking for Snake, but the dive's back up, they get the stun, Control our off to Skeeter. Skeeter turns with the stun himself, and he's life stealing back up. It's not enough though. Skeeter goes down. Secret. Able to get one kill out of this, maybe more. Crystalis trying well, to lead the charge. Secret, they want to they want to get something else out of this. Tundra, Zach's in the trees. Put Duke off to the side, back under the tier two. He'll be fine. But Secret, they force a fight there around the expiring ages of Nisha. They get Skeeter. And with that in mind, they'll be able to get themselves straight onto Tundra's half of the map and continue to grow this lead. Perfectly rallied, right? Rallied around Puppy. That's got to be the name of the game. He's got the flats, he's got the mech, he's got all these auras. We see the ice armor coming into play. Crystalis had no fear. He pops BKB and he just starts charging right through everybody. And then they nicely kite and play around that supernova beautifully. Tundra maybe going a little bit too hard going into this secret lineup when there still is that Aegis. So 10 seconds until it was going to go down. Yeah, it was a very clean reset as well there for the secret as soon as yeah. the supernova comes out. They're able to sort of back off. And, and you can see, you know, from Tundra, they still commit into this. They very much feel that they've got the strength to do so with the five of them. It wasn't quite the case. Losing Skeeter here to what was a very patient Zayas, just keeping himself held to the side, My looking for that opportunity to open things up onto Tundra from maybe an angle that they weren't quite ready to, to sort of expect that entrance from the toss from. Back in action, talking about the toss, Zayas! Woo! In with a jump, they lock down Snaking, Skeeter looks to turn, they've got the Gliding Control out, but Skeeter is trapped! Trapped on the low ground, he'll stand his ground, the turtle was ready, the Prince coming out, and he will take out the two of them! It's a double kill for nine! Oh my, it was so Soxa gets the two-man rebound and they get the chain stun oh from man. the birds? I mean, oh it, man. This time around, a very much case of secret. Kind of making the the, the move into to committing for the fight, but not having what it took that to, to sort of take Skeeter down at the same speed they're able to do back mid. Tundra able to turn. And immediately off the back of taking down those two cores. They'll take the tier one fun. tower. They're closing that lead that Secret were building. It's back down to sort of straight even here on the goal. It's so much sustain that comes out really from Tundra's draft Radiance too. Their Vlads, their sidekick, everything coming to play. I mean, look at Skeeter. I mean, watch his HP. I think a couple of nice armlet toggles there as well for Skeeter very much keeping him fully in action. Between that and the heels, there's just too much. They couldn't kill the CK this time round. <laughs> Not rallied around Puppy. You know, they have to be a little bit careful when they don't have all these auras that are making them that much tankier. Tundra's damage is pretty insane. Yep. And when they go for those plays and Nine's just able to sort of sit back at a distance, yep. it, it's concerning. You know, He's loving two life. kills for Nine. And now they also have an AC, so starting to build up these auras to even counteract and play against this Chen, but also protect versus this big damage that comes out from the Bristle and that morph. 33 is quite large. Yeah, and we see with nine next time queued up, it's gonna be the blink dagger, so it'll be even harder okay. for Secret to get that jump onto him. We see any sort of snowball or hero running up at this arc ward at nine, he's gonna be able to blink back, reposition, and allow the rest of his team to, to sort of be there in between him and Secret. I love this type of build. Eventually, you can always build into like these overwhelming blinks and whatnot on arc ward, and then you have these double blinks and all this aggression you can do too. It's very oppressive, it's Tundra. Now starting to find their footing completely. Well, they for two themselves. Sidekick bird. Look how quick the tower drops. See you later. Gone in a matter of seconds, even even if that. And off the back of that, immediate smoke from Tundra. They know that Secret's playing over on Tundra's half the map around their jungle. They're feeling incredibly strong with this with this newfound AC on 33. This is a tough time for Secret to take a fight. They also disassembled to the BKBs and ready. Nine with the Tempest doubling, start things off with the Glyph, and they grab back Zayat. Secret, they've got to run. Oh. Hey, that's also really cool that he can do with the blink too, right? Now he's he has an initiator. They don't need to actually rely on yep. the Mars CB when to jump in. in. He just blinks in and gets a Glyph for initiation. 
And yeah, BKB, Skeeter had just finished that one up, so they felt strong to be able to go for this play. And now he's got Mage Slayer as well, too. So items started to be picked up on the side of Tundra, not only just to do lots of damage, but of course, damage mitigation, as we've seen so much from them. AC, yep. Mage Slayer, it's gonna start to reduce a lot of secret potential. Yeah, it's so hard for, for them to burst through Skeeter, like they were able to do that yep. one time when he was caught on their half of the map. It's, it's a really good item this game, just like last time, versus that Lash versus the Bristle, reduce the damage of the Quills, even the burst that comes out from Morphling. So, it's starting to come together for them. It's a very common build, of course, too, for Skeeter. I think for Secret, Nisha, almost certainly making the call for them to just sort of hold off on any further engagements until he gets his BKB done. Yeah. About half the gold away from the recipe, and it will be there, but it's gonna be a little later than the timing that Roshan is gonna be back in the game here. Roshan respawning. They're Secret, walking up. They are up on the high ground. They definitely wanna try and do their best to push Tundra away from going for the Rosh. See if they can hold them off from it. That's Tundra. They won't feel the need to, to be too scared of Secret. You know how strong they are. Secret, a look at the smoke up. Trying to catch Tundra from an angle they won't expect is not going to be easy when Secret currently hold the position they are. They're going to try and swing around from the west. Lanes are starting to kind of get pushed out though. We see Tundra cutting away mid. We've got this ward on nine. Nine. He's already out of this area. This is the Tundra special, right? They start shoving those side lanes in to try to put you into this awkward position of a fight. Everyone rallied around each other. How do you make the call of Secret? How do you make the jump? Tundra with their own smoke. They don't want to overextend for these type of jumps either. Like, no, we're, like we were saying I'll before, stand. they need to stay kind of rallied around Puppy. Make sure that they can utilize these auras at a maximum. Tundra, Tundra just rotating sort of all the way around where Secret tried to step out for. They found Puppy. And they're going to be able to get on the easy kill first. Straight on over the chair. Puppy caught by the Hex. Taken down. Science tries to roll in, but there's no place for him here. Puppy pig pulled himself. Doesn't even get to get any heals off or anything. No Wraith Pack, no mech. Caught by the stun anyway, so likely dies, but now yeah, but it's an option for them to go for Roche. And with both supports down, I don't think the cause of Secret are going to want to turn up for this. Oh boy. This should be a, a free and easy Roche out for Tundra. Free shard as well. Skeeter is going to be loving that. He actually passes it away. Looks like he's going to give it to Nine. Okay, so more ways to, for him to protect himself and also magic resistance. So they can actually hold it. So we're talking more so much about damage mitigation, of course, but this is another element that I feel like we don't really get to see too often. You fight inside the bubble, yep. your lash, this bristle, the damage might not be there. It's, 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 it's going to be a cool fair one. bit of protection. Indeed, the, able to be kept consistently up and out on the field. And things are starting to get a bit scary because the scaling for Tundra is getting quite strong. Even the Marcy, level 12 is online. BKB is on the horizon. 12 on Phoenix. Game plan for Secret is starting to get kind of dissuaded. Around the mid, they do find 33. Okay. Allen on his own. He's very deep. They might be able to do something about the familiars as well here. Big pickup. Good for slip up a rare one as well there for 33. Out on his own. He out now for 40 seconds. Can they turn it into more? Is they there have something to, they can do with this one? Yeah, they have to push out this bottom lane. Top is being dealt with with Puppy, but do they have an opportunity to go for anything here? Sax is very close to his BKB. Already once again, you know, Tundra support. So many games where their supports just turn, they turn into additional cores. Forces a Marcy. Very much sort of the direction that Saxon will go as the minutes pass. Skeeter. So having his blink dagger done. May have killed 33, but indeed it, it definitely feels like there's not a whole lot they can do with that. They're looking towards Nine's Tempest double at the top. See so if they can sort of burst through that, get a bit of extra gold for themselves. They will, they'll take it down. Have to go for the top play because yep. you looked at the side lanes, mid lane, Phantasm was pushing it bottom, Phantasm Illusion was also pushing it. So it's a typical Tundra trying to shove those lanes down. And now they see this, they see them split up. So Tundra, they're looking to strike. Full axe on Crystallis. Comes out late though. Does not quite at the timing that they would have hoped for, especially considering the decent start they did have to this game. Zayat, with the one left behind up top. Could have been Tundra, everybody back on the map now. Ready to get together. Push down on this top lane. Still many minutes of Aegis to play with. Full Octrine oh done boy. on nine. He's so far. 6,000 ahead of his counterpart. And there's going to be no catching up in, in terms of farm unless no Secret are able to find these fights where Nisha is able to pop off, get the kills, somehow take down this Arc Warden. It's going to be a lot of money if they're able to do so. 
not an easy task. He's got his Chrysalis done, Nisha, so stepping up the damage a bit. We'll see how explosive he will be, if he's able to get in. The center of the fight with the waveform, stand his ground between the BKB and the Manta that he has. He's gonna need as much... Expl I, I feel like it's really appropriate that he's not in this... I feel like they're really just gonna need all the physical damage as possible, because as we were saying, you know, they just have so many different ways to mitigate that magic damage that they always tend to do. Especially with that arc warded bubble as well too. So yeah, straight physical damage, go wave from attack target, and with that with the goo as well too, he could be dealing a lot of damage, but so far Tundra, they've started to really just take over this map. 5k lead, 4 to 5k, I mean nowhere near as terrifying as the numbers were showing at this no. moment in the game, in game one. But still, you very much feel that one more fight, if the next fight crumbles for Secret, that number, that lead's gonna triple. Secret they cannot Dyer's afford to lose another attack. team fight here against Tundra. At the moment, very much seems like they're opting to wait out the Aegis the Skeeter has. Radiant's not looking to head straight into anything for this final minute. The Skeeter has that second life. Is under attack. Again, pop those Phantasm to send out to all these side lanes. Bottom is being pushed, but immediately nine goes down. So again, sticking together Tundra, and they will just find a freebie. They will indeed, Zyas. I mean, anyone that they catch with the fun that Skeeter has. And now that's completely destroyed. High ground. They've got drums for these birds. They've got the sidekick we're going to see on the bird, too. And look at the this. speed. Look how fast it drops. It's going quickly. Fortification is there from Secret. They've got the Rezo. They've got Shard on Rezo, so he's going to be able to slow it down a little bit with these chain stuns. We'll see if Nisha can do anything here. He's ready to TP over. Help out with the defense. Oh, this is dirty. Look at these birds. Birds with magnetic field magic resistance, the attack. I mean, they're just so they're, strong. They are huge annoyance to deal with here for Secret. We'll go for the resummon. Sun, Skeeter. He's low, but he's still got 20 seconds or so left on the ages. He's going to back off. We'll see them catch out the two of them with the root. Skeeter focuses in. I'll be him going down. Rezo. Those final few seconds of the ages. He's ready for round two. Saxa, he'll charge him with the unleash of the BKB. Quickly turning towards him with his right clicks. They got him. The Marcy's life. Sanks are to fall. Grab the hole the Chrysalis. Gear of them. Can they get back in on top of the Chrysalis? They take him down. Nisha top of the BKB. He's having to use it to retreat back to the high ground. He's in straight away. Blinks up into the high ground. They've got the lock down over towards Nisha. Wayform back up in time. Nisha gets away. Double buyback from Secret. They're putting everything into this defense. But Skeeter's in with a chaos bar over towards Resolution. It doesn't matter though. Skeeter goes down. Secret with the two buybacks. They'll be able to hold. Tundra back. Nisha able to stand his ground there. Look at the damage done. 9,000 damage from the Morphin. The buyback's coming perfectly. A defense for sure here from Secret. But they'll want, they'll want more. They gotta push forward for sure. Priscilla spending up for that one. See up to the side, Zayats. Look at the catch though, the gap control onto Snake King. Snake King popped the supernova, but Chrysalis is He's gonna die. And he's ready to help take the egg down. Secret. They'll find another down bottom. Rezo, he's got his eyes on Nice. Oh. That's already been used, and he's out in time. Nine, able to get away before these still to put a stop to him. They'll still clean up the Tempest double. A secret. With this sort of pushback, they're able to bring in the mid lane, bring in the bottom lane, and we get the creep waves back under sort of their momentum, and they may just be able to take some tier twos away from Tundra here. Close the gap, close the lead that Tundra's had for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, this time it's Tundra fueling themselves a little bit too much in that fight and that just getting counteracted from those buybacks. The damage, this time Rezo is able to hold his ground. I mean, we're, we're very much seeing, you know, you get given sort of any window from Tundra, you have to take full opportunity of it. Immediate smoke. Exactly what Secret's doing. Yeah, they got a smoke to sweep the map. They still have some heroes dead. Ults on cooldown. Try to get as much as you can out of all Yeah, they've got to keep their foot slammed down on the battle. Oh, they the The point 33 off to the shot to himself for now, but they're surrounding him, and he's got nobody else in the area, so 33, he'll go down, secret, they continue to play hard and fast, fighting back, Big at Tundra. A huge place, really, those buybacks are really coming into play, 33, but he accepts his death, he had the Aeon just locked, he's like, no, 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 no one's coming to help me, as secret, find their way back into this game, Nisha, Nisha, he's massive now, level 20 about to be taken, also Daedalus is finished, Big damage to come out from this mall. He's gonna be able to focus fire these targets a little bit better. I mean, it was seen, as I say, so many times before. Nisha on the mall thing. This is the hero. You wanna have him in on, on in this sort of position. He can absolutely carry any sort of game to the later stages when he's on his mall fling. See, top lane. So, of course, now done. 
Rezo, One very nine. deep. He's very deep. There's a hex. Look at the opening hex. And Rezo is going to be able to get anything off. He's not. Phantasm's out. An overwhelming amount of damage there from Skeeter and the Phantasm. That's the hex reveal. He had no idea that was going to come. Usually you'd, you'd be able to let maybe play around with the, the pounds coming in or the rebound coming in from Marcy with the BKB, but did not expect that hex from the tree lines. Roche, it'll be a long spawn. Two minutes. Science. Standing under a ward here. Very careful how far up he is. I mean, Secret are absolutely going to want to do their best to keep tabs of when Tundra heads the pit. They don't want to get out there, they don't want to contest them. They do not want Tundra getting this next Roshan. Nice play from Nisha. The illusions down bottom, we see them cutting the wave. So, making sure that they always deal with those lanes. It seems like it's always like the most important thing when you're playing versus Tundra. Keep that lane equilibrium. Will be addressed immediately. Nine shows up. And they're going to just keep pe peeping into the pit. That's going to be that next big thing, 90 seconds. It really is. See if Secret can set up in a fashion to make sure that they are ready to take this fight around this area. Going to look at these buyback statuses at the moment, too. So. Oop. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hopefully, uh, simply sort of some, potentially maybe just a hotkey issue or something. See if that's going to be fixed by a quick reset here for snaking. Mm -hmm. uh, very much, yeah, the moment that we're going to see them leading towards now. He's back in. Let's see if he can use his courier now. Give him a quick check. Look at lane positioning at the moment, though. Secret have to try to fix their lanes a little bit. They do have this Harpy creep. They need to perhaps try to cut things, but the moment Tundra have lanes in a very good position. Let's have a look. Phantasm is up in a moment as well, too, so they're going to be able to keep going for this shove play. And yeah, Roche constantly going to be getting scouted. And the important thing is, too, Secret doesn't know about that deep ward down south. The one that was scouted in Zyde's port, that's a very sneaky one that has not been seen. Oh. It's not a good sign. Uh-oh. Look, this gets Curious Bug. Let's see if there's going to be a hopefully simple solution to this. <laughs> a standard uh, unlucky. You can say so. Yeah, unlucky. And that Nisha smile. Let's see if we're able to get this sorted. A little bit of a... You know, not, not really something you can play on with. It's locked, he says. Let's see if they can fix it. So a big thing really to look at is, I mean, this, this hex is going to be a big one, really. Let's have a look. Looks like we're just getting this checked out now on the stage. Hopefully it should be... An easy enough fix. I mean, I'm not something I could say I've run into before, right? I've had it. A, I've had it with neutral items. Sometimes when you're trying to take it with wars and smoke, maybe something like that is happening. But it doesn't have a neutral there, so. So I think with maybe the speed that we did have to reconnect the first time round could have been without a client reset. So yeah, let's we'll see. Probably go for the, the full restart this time round. Hopefully, if not, he'll be able to at least drop the wards and give them to a different courier so somebody else can bring them. But still wouldn't quite be ideal. No way. Of course, this pool is coming at a very important moment of the game. 17 to 17 here, 35 minutes in. Without a doubt, very much getting much more of a, a balanced game of Dota 2 on our hands I this mean, time round. It's secret they've dealt much better with, with what Tundra's brought against them this time round. It's really neck and neck. Just because, I mean, especially how big Nisha really is, how much he's going to be able to do with this Daedalus. And he's approaching his second item afterwards, too. So survivability will be there for him. All right, let's see. Let's have a look. Fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen, that things are going to be all working after the pause. Let's see. Oh. Uh, doesn't look it looks, good. It looks good. Oh, is it? No, it's, it's spazzing. I actually see it. It's like kind of, it's like stutter walking actually in the base, I think. Look, look like for a second it tried to move. But yeah, it says retrieving items. See, look. If you click on the, click on snaking screen, it says retrieving items. On the actual courier, it's a buff. Ooh, okay, now we're giving it another try. Because usually it tries to pull it from... Well, he dropped it. There we go. Oh, Looks like go. we're good to go. A little bit of, you know, a way to break out of it. A, a bit of a soft flop that was there on the courier. It's all good. We're all I, think good. We, I think we all needed that. You know, a little bit of a reset. Okay, let's get back into it. So, you know, that was always a bit of a concerning position, but we're all good. We're all good. It has been fixed. We'll see if it's... Should be an issue down the line, maybe. Yeah, the, the courier was just sort of stuck or something. But it's good. It's all good. We're back on. And around, of course, the focus. Next up for both teams, gonna be this Roche out. 
Just a minute until it's going to respawn. Well, Nisha already All has, it. Yeah, she I mean, has it. He's getting the items, Nisha. He's getting the items to be able to do this. He can, still, yeah, that... obviously a huge gap in network between him and the Arc Warden. Yeah. That's always going to be expected at a certain point at this stage, especially with the amount of freedom that Nine's had. And Nine, of course, this game, 4 0 5. Just pretty much complete free farm across the map. If they can get the hex, though. Ah, they're only getting the opening. There's no, no more save, though. It's going to be there. Give Nisha a bit of a chance to break out of this initiation from Tundra. They jump across sides, looks towards 33. They push Saxa out towards the side. Nisha beating him down, takes out the Marcy. They look towards the Tempest, double next. Tundra losing that Marcy, losing Saxa like this. They're, they're very careful about how they commit for the fight first. Beautiful play, really, from Zayats. Just immediately, that's the big thing they have to watch out for. It's just the chain control. If they can chain stun, chain hex the Morphling, that's the way the Tundra kills them. I'm mean, all he... eyes on Zayats to go for those yeah. games. Oh, there's again the hex. So Zayats by his side. He's got to be there every, every time. Every single time, Zayats making sure that there's a chance for Nisha to fight back. They get to the further stun. The Nisha's in so much trouble. They're taking it down. He bought out. Out for 80 seconds. He didn't have BKB still available. They just commit for him. I don't they, think Sigurd saw he, that. All he had was to say Tannic to rely on, but if he, even if he gets that off, he's getting caught in the stuns. Oh, boy. Almost certainly. And, I mean, Roche now is for the taking. Uh, it certainly is. It's a big Perfect one. Perfect time for it to be back up here for Tundra. They head over to the pit. And with no Nisha, no Zayats, nothing that Secret can do about this. This, this is going to be a free Roshan here for Tundra. And Zayats is there. He's there perfectly to try to go for the save. Young BKB, Mantis still on cooldown. The double roots. You see the Gleipner coming in. He's able to cover. So much control, and yeah, Age of Cheese, Refresh of Shard. Oh, who's taking the Refresh of Shard? Who do you want this Usually off? it's the Phoenix, but yep. let's see if he does to opt to pass it to somebody yeah, very else. Very close to hitting the level 18 as well, so the Supernovas have the potential to be huge. And they oh, they have this ward up top too. Rezo, there's a Hex. There's nine again. They've got the chain stone. Finding the opening, in with the rebound as well. Toss back with the Dispose. They take him down before the Hex Man. comes to an end, and any opportunities there for resolution to respond. He's oh. out for 70, he does have buyback himself. Still at 10 seconds without Nisha. Tundra, they're straight down the mid. They take out the range racks, and they'll look to get the melee racks as well. Chrysalis trying to force them away from him, but they don't Crystal care about him. In fact, they're just gonna get aggressive on him, drag him back in. He has to put the BKB here. As the Phantasms continue to take down the melee ranks, the full set now in the mid, Radiance removed here by Tundra, and they're sticking around. Nine up towards the top of the Tempest double. They're trying their best to force out this buyback from Resolution. Another tier three's gone. A second set of ranks exposed. Look Tundra. how fast it dies. Are they going to be forced back at all? Fortifications pop. Zinisha on top of the Tempest double. It's going to come to an end. Nisha's been caught with the Southern Snowball. It's there. It's there. Dice able to bail all the Nisha out. That initiation there from Tundra. Nisha wants the BKB. Yeah, looks towards Saxon. But Saxon wants the BKB. Turns towards Crystalis. Dispose is there. Crystalis is down. No buyback for him. There's 100 seconds now without their Bristol. Rezo, his own BKB to come to an end. He has to back off. Nisha's also going to be so careful. They'll lose Puppy. Two heroes dead, no buyback on them. Tundra, they take a full second set of barracks. They're just so good at just resetting and poking, forcing BKBs, forcing mistakes, waiting for the perfect opportunity. I mean, they're not going back anywhere. No way, Snaking still has the refresher shard. They couldn't even touch the egg in that last fight. I mean, we've seen with it, so the purchases from Chrysalis, he did spend up. He's, he would have had buyback back in three seconds, but he's 700 gold short of it. It's all gone. I mean, the way they kill those buildings is way too fast. I mean, the terrifying thing as well is indeed, yeah, Skeeter still with that Aegis, Snaking still with the refresher shot. There's no reason, no need for Tundra to back off. They're looking to close this game two out. And the tier fours fall. Secret. They'll look to smoke up. One final attempt to stop this push from Tundra, but the Ancient Fall is Dying too fast. Looks to jump in. Skeeter will drag back Resolution. Resolution trying to get the heal off with the Bloodstone. They'll keep him alive. The hand of God from Puffy will protect him for now. But the Ancient still dying here to the familiar secret. They're trying to push them back, but it's not going to be possible. GG is going to be called. Wow. As game two. Also going to Tundra, who now lead the series 2-0 to zero against Team Secret. I mean, I feel like the whole game kind of flips the script, everything looking kind of even. Nine gets this hex, immediately the game just becomes fully in their favor. A couple pickoffs here and there, the way they can poke and prod, force BKBs, reinitiate, re-go. Beautiful to watch. Tundra just continue to be on another level in these team fights. Yeah, they, re they really, really do. I mean, in regards from game one to game two, definite sort Much of improvements closer. overall from Secret, but still 
just the way that Tundra are able to shut these games down and even to the point as well with their draft we knew that the win was going to come in a bit of a different fashion regardless from what they did in game one and you know the fact at the end of the day is that nine on the arc water what a beast eight zero nine secret they were just never able to catch him for no he kept the distance got it. he was like the initiator half the time too it felt like he did it pretty much everything for this team catching the split push etc remarkable game from tundra well as we said a bit of an improvement made from game one to game two but it really feels like secret they've got to step it up so much more to have any sort of chance of stopping tundra in their tracks as tundra now leading the series two to zero just one win away from taking the championship